Hey, Zeke. See? Did you know that today's show is sponsored by CastCartel.com? Maybe. When you're sitting at home at night and it's late, the liquor store is closed, you're bored, you're on the couch, you're like, I'm all out of my Wheatley vodka or I'm all out of my gin. You got to get more. Or maybe it's your whiskey. Whatever it is, CastCartel.com will get it shipped right to your door. They have some store picks, even though it's not a lot. There's some breaking bourbon picks on there. This is not going to be the place you go to get crazy bourbon and crazy whiskey. But if you want some good daily drinkers, be it bourbon, be it gin, be it vodka, tequila, mezcal, whatever it is, go to CastCartel.com. They are changing the industry standard. They're like the Amazon of the spirits industry. You know what that means, Zeke? I know what Amazon is. So you know how Amazon is not the one who's actually doing the selling? They're kind of getting stores. They're a place to bring stores together with the consumer. I mean, I hit this pay button on the Amazon.com. Yeah, it goes through Amazon, but there is another store that is actually fulfilling that order. Okay, yes. So that's what Cast Cartel does, so that you can sit on the couch with one hand and order your liquor. One hand, you say? Yeah. Cascartel.com. Follow them on Instagram, cascartel.com, or also follow them on Facebook. Another thing I have to tell you before we start the show, it's a secret. You got a lot on your forehead today. Why? Well, you just keep telling me stuff. But it is a secret, and the secret is out. If you are a distillery, you probably already know the secret. Distilleryproducts.com has the best prices and selection around for your engraved laser etched glass needs they have all your glen karens they are the only place in america that is a wholesaler where you can get the neat glass they have the tua glass and that is an irish whiskey tasting glass it's a total secret the people that knew about them the way that i found out about them was distilleries And they have great wholesale products that you can engrave. That's what we use for all of our glasses on the show, distilleryproducts.com. They have flasks, glasses, all sorts of cool stuff. If you want to put a brand on it or a logo on it, if you are a bourbon group, if you are a store, if you are a distillery, you are missing the boat if you are not using distilleryproducts.com. And we thank them for providing all of our glassware on Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Might be a tough move with the uh, the Tua glass here in the South. Is that like a football reference? Yeah, Alabama's quarterback. He goes by the name of Tua. Well, I have three of. Well, Kentucky is three of ain't going to beat Alabama and Tua. No. Distilleryproducts.com. Check them out. <laughs> We are here at Old Forge. I have Jimmy Prophet from the Old Mill, and it is Heritage Days here at, at the Old Mill and it Old is. Forge. Tell me a little bit about Heritage Days and what goes on here. I know it's the last weekend in September every year, right? Yes, we always do it the fourth weekend in September, so it may not always be the last, but it is always the fourth, and uh, this is our 16th year of doing Heritage Day. And 16? We, 16 years now, yeah, and I was here for the very first one. Help plan it, and uh, and I got stuck uh, doing it, I guess. But uh, uh, well, we, we do it to celebrate the heritage of the area. So it's all about the, the food, the music, the traditions of our people, of our heritage in the Great Smoky Mountains and at the Old Mill. So it's really celebrating the heritage of, of just the entire area. So I was rushing in here from Nashville, and I know that after I finish recording with you and Keener, I'm going to be able to go over and look at some more of the heritage days. But tell me a little bit about the heritage in the area and what you all are celebrating for Heritage Days. I know this was a mill, right? Yes. But, so our mill but was. What specifically was it milling? Well, the mill was built in 1830, and it was built to specifically to grind mainly corn, uh, but other grains that the local farmers would grow. So they would they would bring the farmers would bring all their grains in to be ground, and the uh, the miller would keep his share. So there was always the miller's cut, and uh, and then they you know would get their grains back to do whatever they needed. So if it was to use it to make food for their family, to barter and trade and sell, whatever the farmer needed to do with it, but then the the miller kept his portion of it. And uh, from there, about 15, 16 years later, the first post office was opened up inside the mill. 
So that's where Pigeon Forge really got its name. So it was named for the Iron Forge that was located next door, which was the original to the uh, to the area, and uh, and the pigeons that would roost in the trees along the river. So we got Pigeon Forge. So essentially, where we are right now, where Old Forge is and where the old mill is, that was like the hub of Pigeon Forge. Absolutely, it back was. In the day. It was. It was the center of town then. It still is today, and it was where everybody had to go to on their trip to town. So whether they were actually going to be getting something ground or not. Uh, they may go there to barter or trade something. They may go there to look at the door. The uh, the old wooden door to the mill was where they would post all the notices of the birth, the death, the off to war, coming home, church revival, community picnic, maybe whatever was equivalent to a podcast back then. <laughs> whatever was happening, it That's was happening at the mill. The that was center, pretty right. much sitting around talking. Yeah, we kind of joke and say that things like social media are not new. Um, back then they posted it on the door today we posted on what we call our wall so you know it's being social is something that goes back to the beginning of time in Appalachia yeah. that's what we do and and lots of rocking chairs and people sitting around <laughs> on the porch right absolutely here. the rocking chair the pickle barrel you know all those things yeah yeah there's something to be said for a really good rocking chair it, you <laughs> know if you find one that's comfy and you can have it on your front porch yeah or if you have them downtown and you all can kind of I mean it, it was it was probably the city center sitting out at the saloon, moved to kind of the barber shops. Right. And uh, and now you have social media. And we have them, we have those rocking chairs all over property because that is what it gives people an opportunity to stop and slow down. Yeah. Take it easy for just a minute, you know. So back then it was uh, a break from their from their long hard day. But today it's a break from maybe from their vacation a little bit, you know, in the traffic or waiting in line for this or that. So they get to take a, a few minutes to sit. And just relax and, and take in the sounds and the smells. Because when you're sitting there, you'll hear music somewhere off in the distance. You're going to smell the bread bacon in the in the cafe. You're going to hear maybe the, the grinding, the turn of the wheel on, on the front of the mill in the early mornings. I love being out there because you hear that eh, 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 just kind of as it's turning. Yeah. And you know that's the sound they heard almost 200 years ago. And they knew they were getting close to town. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, and there's all sorts of stuff out here. But one of the things that I noticed as I was driving in is that you guys have the old, uh, the old, what are, what are the things that even that have the spinning wheels, like the grist that you're... Um, well, the large wheel on the, on the front of the mill, it, it operates some, some of the equipment in the mill. But the small but ones you, you guys have over there. In oh, the, the stones, yes. We, yeah. have, we have several sets of stones um, sitting around. And those are millstones that we picked up maybe from uh, some local farms. Because most farmers brought their stuff into town. But some larger farms would actually have their own stones. So they could grind uh, some themselves. And mills popped up in every, um, every little community. So it would have been very possible uh, back in 1830 to have had half a dozen mills in Sevier County. Yeah, because the mills where I was growing up were all textile mills. Right. So it was a different thing than a, a corn mill. Yeah, and where I grew up, I grew up in Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia, and uh, we had two old mill restaurants there that were that were established inside of an old mill that had been there for <laughs> you know almost 200 years, but the mill itself didn't survive. And here we built the old mill restaurant next to the old mill because our mill was still operating. We didn't want to shut it down uh, so it grinds. It grinds five days a week, um, eight hours a day. The millers are in there doing what they do. And the old mill has amazing freaking food. I just got to <laughs> say, this isn't a plug. They didn't tell me. I mean, yes, are they all? Are they all here? Are we, we are going to feed you, right? I hope. That's I what know. we. That's what we do. We feed people. <laughs> Nobody has told me. Admittedly, nobody has told me if I'm getting food or not. I've, I've got connections. Here, yeah, I'm sure it's... they're going to take care of us. But <laughs> the last time I was here, and, and it's important to say this, right? When, you, when you're doing a podcast, you, you have to declare, I was not given this meal. I paid for it myself the uh -huh. last time I was here. But I had the chicken and dumplings at the old mill. It was so good. Yeah. And my daughter had the fried chicken and just absolutely loved it. It's just a great time. And uh, I, I love the atmosphere there. It is kind of, you know, you're, you're not going to have brand new, modern looking stuff when you go right, in there. Right, right. But it feels down home. It feels and like it, home. And it's all traditional yeah. country food. 
um, traditional to our area, traditional to the South, and we do make it by scratch, from scratch. So it's we're we're in there. We've got people in the kitchen starting at 4 a.m. to get lunch ready, you know, and then they've got to get breakfast ready in between that, and they're cooking a hundred gallons of corn chowder at one time. Oh, they're man. they're boiling 50 pounds of potatoes at one time. Our mashed potatoes are real, honest to God. Real mashed potatoes. You mean they're not those ones that come in the bag that you not, boil? Not in a bag, no, no. Not in a bag, not in a box. No, they, they honestly, we do. We peel, hand peel. Um, one person is responsible for all the potatoes every day, so we make our own mashed potatoes. We're cooking the green beans for four hours. You know, it's um, we're cutting the meat ourselves. We're breading everything with our products from the mill. So um, our breading for the fried chicken, for the country fried steak, it all comes from our mill. Ah, it's so good. Which Keener probably told you all the grains they need for here are coming from our mill as well. Yeah, Keener's told us that before. I don't trust everything Keener tells me. So well, it's good to have a verification from somebody else. I mean, Keener's like one of those guys, you look at his face and you're like, I want to trust you, Yeah, but I don't always trust you. Yeah, I think distillers are a lot like fishermen. There's <laughs> a lot of stories there that you <laughs> you may have to... You may have to verify from somebody else to back it up. He has to tell you a whopper of a story That's right. about how the one time he distilled an extra 200 gallons, you know, with a still that only produces two gallons. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I ran that thing for three weeks straight. I produced 200 gallons. That's right. You know? <laughs> uh, there, there's a bunch of stuff for Heritage Day for the kids, too. There's a whole we area. We do, yeah. It's a huge area uh, for the kids. And, and we have a, a great company that we work with called Days Gone By. And they set up all the, all the games and activities for the kids. So it's a lot of interactive, old-fashioned, old-timey games. They'll do face painting, pumpkin painting. And then we also get uh, Little Ponderosa to come in and set up a petting zoo for us. And all that's free for the kids. So we don't charge anything for that. They get to come and spend as much time as they went back there playing and and uh, and just enjoying and having a good time. Isn't that something that as a country song days go by? Probably, yeah, somewhere I, in there. I think that's <laughs> they named their company after a country yeah. song. I know my daughter's back there now uh, getting her face painted and doing all yeah. sorts of fun stuff. So appreciate the fact that y'all have things for the kids too. That's awesome. What is your favorite part of Heritage Days and what is your favorite meal at the restaurant? Oh, gosh. Uh, so my favorite part about Heritage Day is just the fact that we get to share so much with people. And we get to share, really, who we are at the core. And uh, and I'm an Appalachian, and I love that. So um, getting to share that is, is just my favorite part. And we have incredible music. And we get to do some fun and games. We're going to have bingo in a little bit up from the main stage. So, uh, so we do things like that for the adults as well. And when it comes to the food, probably at the Old Mill restaurant, I would say my favorite is probably the fried chicken. Yeah, absolutely love the fried chicken. And uh, and at the cafe, gosh, I hate to be redundant, but their chicken tenders are the best I've ever <laughs> had anywhere. Good. They're incredible. And uh, probably you know probably a good Reuben or something like that. As a good Appalachianer, you, you know where the real moonshine is? Well, I do, but um, I am kind of sworn to secrecy. And All right, we'll, we'll talk after Okay, this. gotcha. Not a problem. You know, Great I, to learn I have about. a funny story that I want to tell you about the moonshine and about our old mill. Please so do. Our, our tour guide, Emmett, he worked at the mill when he was 14. He worked in there until he was 27. He went off into the world to make a career, several careers for himself. He just came back. He just retired and decided to come back 40 years later to do tours for us. Yeah. So he was telling me the other day about the first time he helped sharpen the stones in the mill. And to sharpen them, they have to literally pull these stones apart. So they're 2,000 pounds apiece. So you've got to be really careful. There's, there's some equipment in there to help pull that apart that's been there since 1830. So again, you got to be really careful. <laughs> um, but they sharpen them by hand. Yeah. So they were taking the chisel and hammers and they're chiseling this out. And uh, there's a picture in there that actually documents the very first time he helped. He was about 15 at this point Oh wow! Uh, when they did it. And uh, so he noticed, he said he noticed the, the two older gentlemen in there that were working. Uh, they had long sleeves on in the middle of summer. And it gets hot in the mill. It's not a cool place. There's no, no air conditioning inside the mill itself. Uh, but he comes in in a T-shirt, you know, he's short sleeves. He's trying to get through the day. And uh, so they start sharpening the stones. He said at lunchtime he went home. And he walked in the house, and his mom looked at his arms and said, what in the world has happened to you? He had all these little chip marks all up and down his arms where as they're sharpening the stones, the chips would fly off and, and would cut his arms. So he said he came home a bloody mess. So his mom said, come over here. 
and she uh, pulled him to the sink, said, hold out your arms. So he held him out over the sink. Oh, no, she reaches if under I the know. sink and oh. grabs a jar of moonshine and pours it over his arm. <laughs> He, he said, never cause, wore short sleeves he ever said, again, and he, did he? No, he did not, and he made sure he went back that day with some long sleeves. He said that moonshine was m- much more pure alcohol than rubbing alcohol was ever going to be. So I said, so it was uh, pure and purifying all at the same time. Oh, man. So, but the sting, I yeah. could only imagine. Yeah, she said she'd never seen him dance like that before. <laughs> <laughs> And then I, later he may or may not have made some moonshine or something on down the lines of that, you know. But when I say you have some shine, you know I'm talking about the stuff that's on the side of the hill yeah, and somebody's yeah. dug a still in there. But you, you all have some great moonshine here. I know Keener, we're going to talk about it a little bit more. Um, but Keener and I are, are going to go through some of the shine here, the rock and rye some of the stuff that is around. Looks like a little bourbon sitting there in front of us. And I oh, only yeah. see two glasses. I know. Am do I you supposed to one? leave soon? or? <laughs> they said you had to get back to MC. I do have to get back to, yeah, do I've you, got a job to do over do here. Do you want so. a little sip of something nah, before I'm, you I'll go? I'll, probably, I'll, be okay. I'll come back later. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. All right. Well, we're here for you. Jimmy, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. I've loved learning a lot about stuff with you, and uh, hopefully we get to spend more than 10 minutes with yeah, each other. Yeah, anytime. Time. Absolutely. Cheers. Thank you. So I got to tell you something, Keener. Let's hear it. And Zeke doesn't even know this. Zeke was making fun of me because last night I wore long pants to the event we did. And today I'm wearing long pants here and it's hot as hell. (laughs) And I got to tell you the reason I am wearing long pants. Not everybody knows this. So the other day I'm walking out of my truck and I'm walking back into the, the apartment and I look down at my legs and they're covered in fire ants. Like, all mm. over my mm. legs, just ants biting the hell out of me. <laughs> and my legs look disgusting right now from all the bites. They could probably use some air. Let's take a look. Oh, it's really bad. I'll be the judge of that. I, I'll let you look <laughs> later, but that's why I'm not, that's why I'm not wearing oh, shorts today. Oh, good grief, man. That's a bummer. I mean, it's... I mean, it's quite. It's 950 degrees outside. It is like 900. There is my daughter. Yeah. Look how cute. She's very cute. Hi, Sophia. Somebody get her some lemonade. Get her a cup of some of the some of the the kid friendly lemonade. Not not any of that stuff in the mason jar. And, uh, <laughs> no, it's, no. You're, that's, Please don't give my daughter <laughs> any of the lemonade in a mason jar. Here. We um, you know that's as inconvenient as. As your your leg, I don't want to call it an issue. I like to think of things as opportunities for growth, <laughs> or, or opportunities for improvement. You know, um, we had something similar happen yesterday. It's always exciting this time of year for us here in the distillery because we, it's muscadine season. You know, it's it's harvest time. Yeah, and and that's the base for our harvest gin. But yesterday, you know, we've got this heritage. Uh, Heritage Day thing going on right now, which pretty much gridlocks all the traffic, all the people, all the vendors set up. And I found out earlier this week that as everybody was setting up for Heritage Day, that we were going to be receiving those muscadines right slap in the middle of the day. Um, six to- so uh, six tons of, of muscadine grapes. Oh, boy. Yeah, they got you, didn't they? Yeah. It's all pussy too. It's gross. Oh, dang! Is it like some? Is there some lotion or some ointment? It puts the lotion on its skin. <laughs> it rubs it in. Before we get into this, <laughs> I thought this was going to be a cold open, and now we're two minutes into this. So, right. I'm just going to go ahead and say hello, hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards, and with me today is Keener Shanton from Old Forge Distillery. Man, that sounds good. And together we make the Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. Keener, I normally would introduce you as a guest, but you are you moved up to co-host today. You are sitting in Zeke's chair. That's pressure. A lot of people know you as the distiller for Old Forge. Right. You you all asked me to come out here for Heritage Day. What does Heritage Day mean to you, first and foremost? Um, it's a madhouse. <laughs> It, uh, it's a, you, as you can well tell, and you've, you've probably already experienced, it's it's an opportunity for for us in the Old Mill Square. Not, and I, you know, I can speak, I guess, for the Old Mill Square. It's it's an opportunity for us to just uh, expose ourselves and our roots as, as all things uh, 
<laughs> no, not ex- you, we're not going to expose ourselves. I've seen you expose yourself <laughs> before at Little Arrow Resort, and we don't oh, want that again. Oh, no, that's not a repeat. That's right. No? Although I am looking forward to to uh, grains and grits because there's got to be a, a lot of exposure. Right. A lot of exposures. Exposure. Yeah, exposure. More than one exposure. Right, that's right. Yeah, grains and grits is a trip too. But yeah, Heritage Heritage Day is, you know, we're, we're showing our Appalachian roots and, and the history of Pigeon Forge and um, not only, you know, where we're rooted, uh, but where we're going, where we're growing towards. And that's exciting for us here in the distillery. And it's kind of what brings you here, so we're, we're stoked. And I am excited to ever a turkey spend some leg, time man. I had a right? huge turkey leg. Dang! I needed something. I got up now. Last night we did bacon and barrel. I was probably up pretty late because we broke down there. And then what I want to do is, this is going to bore people, but I want to make sure I got the audio from bacon and barrel off of the recorder before I came here because I didn't want anything to happen to it. Right. And then, so I was up late doing that, and then I got up early and drove out here and saw you. I'm, I was hungry as hell. The first thing I got was a big old ear of corn and a big old turkey leg. Right. Damn, they were good. And you, you hooked me up with some coffee, so thank you. Yeah. We got it, you know, good thing we got you some ballast, but then, you know, we got you caffeinated, so well, let's feed you and then hydrate you and caffeinate you, and then hopefully before you leave, we'll inebriate you. Man, that thing looked amazing. I, I felt like Disney World. It was Came very, very good. Bebopping and sashaying in here with that big ass turkey leg. Now you were mentioning. I stopped you. Oh. You were mentioning something about getting some ballast grapes for a gin. I'm always curious as to what you're you're up to because you're always doing some creative things. What's going on with the gin? Well, uh, it's our harvest gin. I think aptly named because it starts at, at uh, harvest time. We have a local vineyard, uh, Gaddis Vineyards, that grows uh, a number of grapes, but it, we use pretty much all of their muscadine grapes, I think. You know, we get them in here, he crushes them, we bring them in, ferment them into a, a local favorite, a muscadine wine, but we don't stop there, distill it into a brandy, and then further distill it with our botanical load into a gin, and then pour that distillate into a used Tennessee bourbon barrel. And the harvest gin right now is two years old. So it's a two-year-old barrel-aged gin. You age it for two years. This particular batch was, yes. Do you have any here? You know it. I'm, I'm going to have to try that. Oh, yeah. We'll send you home with some of that. We're real excited about it. So that's what we... It just happens to be that yesterday, with all this Heritage Day stuff setting up, that was the day that they were picking and crushing grapes. And anybody... you know, I'm sure you know, you know when you're dealing with grapes you have to process them pretty quickly after harvest or else they'll start spontaneously fermenting, which uh, can be a good thing, but you you don't know for sure. So it's best to just go ahead and get them in here, get them processed, get them fermenting with the yeast that you want them to be fermenting with and instead of something crazy that might be floating around in the air out, out in the vineyard. So were you here pretty late? No. This is the first year we've been doing this since this particular product since 2015. And this was the first year that we got them in early. Uh, typically, it's a it's a nighttime thing. The guy that does it is also a school teacher in a local school. He teaches with my wife, actually, but that's kind of how the connection started. But he would, after school, start this process, and I would be in here until well after midnight <laughs> uh, processing these grapes. But he took the day off this year, thankfully so. He probably charged me more for it per pound, but he took the day off. And we had them all in here by 10 10 a.m. yesterday, which was awesome. It's okay. Tatum pays for it. Yeah. We'll send the invoice to him. Yeah. Tatum, the invoice is on the way. Now, Tatum was supposed to be here today. Yes, he was. You said he had some stomach issues, and that's why he wasn't (laughs) in here, right? (laughs) Yeah, I I suppose. I I think it's a a heart issue. His heart just wasn't in it. He couldn't bring himself to come down here to fight the traffic. I heard it was some stomach issues, and and he ate something kind of funky. (laughs) And he was home. Yeah, he's bless his heart. He doesn't feel good. He's uh, you ever see that plumbing scene? plumbing issues? I think. Well, that's is what, what he said. said. Yeah. It was plumbing that resulted from the stomach issues. Oh. You ever see that scene in Dumb and Dumber? Why are shit scenes in movies so funny? <laughs> Why are that they're so superficial and so disgusting, but they are so damn funny? Like oh, that scene, and then uh, there, uh, the original American Pie. Remember yeah. when? Uh, he got his nickname Shipbreak. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't help but laugh at that. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just me. <laughs> I 
think the nickname Shipbreak is so funny. I would never yeah. want that to be my name. No. Nope. But I just think as a nickname, I wouldn't Shipbreak mind, is funny. I wouldn't mind knowing a guy that I would, could call Shipbreak. Yeah. You know, I, again, I don't want it to be me, but. No, no. It's like, now, now I worked at a job where I could walk home. And when you can walk home and you're five minutes from home and you, you live downtown and work downtown, heck yeah, you could call me Shipbreak. <laughs> I uh, I would go home because there's no reason I was going to do it at the office when right. I was five minutes down the road. Well, you know that the, um, the your your paper your your, your striking paper at work is probably not going to be to the standard that you covet. So that you keep that you keep it home. Absolutely, you know. That's, Absolutely, we are. <laughs> we how, digress. We, we, yeah, <laughs> two minutes worth of talking about turds. If Zeke were here, Zeke is an oversharer. So the grapes came on time. You didn't have to stay late. Right. Tatum got charged. Tatum's at home with some stomach issues and plumbing issues that resulted from the stomach issues. He he also didn't want to drive into Heritage Days. I had a hard time finding a parking spot myself. You see the his the excuse he gave. So the, the plumbing issue is uh, must have been unique to you. The story he told because he told me he had to stay home and wash his hair. He has a lot of it. Yeah. A lot of it. Yeah. So. He, he told me it was the back hair. <laughs> he said, I have to stay home and wash my back hair. <laughs> no, nah, man, I really do feel bad for, you know, just to be legit. I, I think he did have a, a pipe bust in his house or something. That's a bummer. And oh, flooding man. and laundry problem, you know, whatever. That's it awesome. Sucks. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks. <laughs> I want to mention, though, I took a sip of this rock and rye. Mm-hmm. And it is a honey fennel. Right. And I have to mention on the back where it says sweet honey with spicy aromatic licorice notes. Honey fennel rock and rye is an 86 proof spirit to enjoy in a cocktail or over ice. Now we are that was well written. this one neat. That was well written. Absolutely. But I really get the licorice. You really do? It's crazy. Yeah, it's on the back end for sure. It's the fennel, you know, um... And, and what really, what's funny, I typically, as you well know, I drink most of my spirits neat most of the time. Yeah. Chase it with another shot of the same spirit, you know. But this one is one that I, if I'm going to drink this one, it's going to be as a uh, whiskey sour. And it makes that fennel pop big time. Well, I guess with the, uh, uh, with the sour addition, you know, the, the acid. I'm getting the a, a bunch across. of the licorice on there. Right. And, and the last time... I saw you. You had the peach habanero. Right. Rock and rye. Now you also have this ginger lemongrass rock and rye. Right. And now the honey fennel rock That's and right. rye. Those are three three expressions in that line. We have five total. So we can uh, work our way towards the other two. I, I think I got sidetracked right or brought them, but we, we also have a grapefruit thyme and an orange rosemary, which probably the orange rosemary is the house favorite. For, for everybody that works And here. that's the one that you didn't bring. Yeah, it's it's up there in the front of the store. We can... Uh, you had been working on these before. Rock and Rye is a very popular thing. Right. These and are it, 86 proof now. How long are these aged? Um, pretty quick, right? Pretty quick, yeah. It's, um, that, that wasn't the focus, the, the, the long aging process. It's more the flavor combinations that are inspired by... Uh, the candy kitchen across the street, the old mill candy kitchen. And, and that's where you're getting the inspiration. I, that's right. I was trying to set you up with that aging question and the right. I see we're on the same deflect, page. Deflect, yeah, deflected you. But yeah, it's it's a, a pretty it's an expedited aged expeditiously is that a word? Yes. It expeditiously is. aged. I'm very proud of you for Golly, that. Golly, I didn't even write too. that shit down. Um but yeah, so the so the like I said, the the focus on this particular spirit for us is First and foremost, you know, aside from the honey fennel, it's pretty non-traditional to be in the rock and rye line. Everybody, I think, uh, expects certain uh, flavor profile when they're talking about rock and rye. But we went off the reservation, as, we, <laughs> as I do most of the time here. I'm, I'm fortunate that I work with a group of people that I do that allow me to to riff a lot. And we're proud of this product. It's pretty creative. But uh, back to the, the Old Mill Candy Kitchen, That's they've got a pretty popular rock candy over there. This is a pre-prohibition liqueur that was traditionally flavored with and sweetened with rock candy. So that's where that um, inspiration came from. And our herb garden out front of the distillery, we grow fresh herbs and rosemary and uh, lemongrass and things like that. Uh, I love the name. I know it's thyme, like T-H-Y-M-E. Right, yeah. But 
it's like, hey, it's grapefruit time. It's game time. You know? Yeah. We should get a t-shirt made, man. Grapefruit time, or we could tie in the the forge, you know, hammer. Hammer time. Yeah. Hammer time, grapefruit time. You do have a big influence in the marketing here, like with uh, I Got Hammered at Old Forge, the shirt you're wearing. Right. It wasn't a a conscious decision. They just noticed that I was drinking a lot. They're like, we need to make a t-shirt. Sniffing on this ginger lemongrass, I do really see that ginger there. Um, Mm -hmm. That's very noticeable on the nose, almost more so than the lemongrass. Yes. I think you'll probably be... uh, The inverse of that might be... You might notice the the lemongrass a little bit more on the palate. The good thing about having you pull these for me is I'm just going to drink it right from the bottle. Do it to it, brother. Give it a swish. Um, It depends on which... What mood I'm in. That one is probably my favorite of the five because it's a little more subtle uh, it's still it's still uh, sweeter than some things that I typically like to drink but the flavor that one is 100% infused with a vapor basket or a gin basket that's how um, that's how all these rock and rise are done uh, at least for the the herbal note now we do top note with a, a peach flavor or a, an orange flavor from Mother Murphy um, there you go Al this I is- mentioned you <laughs> but the the ginger lemongrass are legit. I think it would pair great with like sushi. It would. It it really I do get that lemongrass kind of on the finish. Mm-hmm. And and there's still a lot of ginger in the flavor right. as well, but I really like this one. I think it would pair well with you know, some sushi or some Asian food. We have a cocktail. It's um not to deviate too much from our Asian food combo, no, no, no. but uh, we've got a cocktail on our uh, menu up there right now, at least for the next couple of days before we launch our fall feature menu in the cocktail bar. Um, but it's made with the ginger lemongrass. It's a, it's a kind of an old fort. Like I said earlier, you know, we do a lot of stuff weird, but we've got a, a Manhattan that we do up there, and that's the base. We, a little sweet vermouth, and then an oops of coffee moonshine, and a lemon, you know, do a, a lemon peel with a uh, chocolate covered cherry as a garnish from our chocolate cherry moonshine and and do a manhattan that's amazing and anyway the, the ginger lim- lemongrass lends itself well to that surprisingly i, really I don't like, know how i really like that ginger lemongrass i mean the honey fennel is good but it's it's almost like the licorice is very overpowered if you love licorice right that's, that's gonna that flavor be your... that fennel or that anise flavor is definitely polarizing you know, it's it's like gin. Yeah. People either love it or they hate it, and uh, I'm one of those that's uh, the odd ducks. It's kind of right in the middle. It depends on what mood I'm in, whether I'm going to like that flavor. So. Oh no, I'm right there with you. Right. It's it's. I'm not saying that because you just said it, but <laughs> it is. Um, it's not licorice. Like it's not a Twizzler licorice. It's right. the black licorice over the red licorice. So if you are in the mood for some black licorice and and that type of thing. It's right up your alley. If you, but you just have to be in the mood for that. Like you're gonna have fresh breath after you drink it. That's right. Yeah. That's the that's get, the thing there. You get any lemon or any fig in there? Not really. No. It, it's there. It's probably just. Uh, let me do masked. another. Yeah, uh, now that you know it's there. Let me do another sip. Now that I've primed your pump with it. I get the fig. The fig is on the mid palate, and then that yeah. licorice really hits right. on the back palate right. to the finish. But that fig and the honey is, is kind of up in the They pair well front. together, right? Yeah. yeah it was, uh, I you know, as you can imagine, you know, the amount of R&D back and forth making these, you know, it takes a, a while to figure out exactly what I like. But, um, you know, the fennel kind of made it in towards the later stages of the R&D. I was like, man, what if we, uh, you know, hit this with a little bit of fennel? So that was your idea to throw in the fennel? Or? Mm, yeah. Well, I'm fortunate, like I said, to work with people that let me kind of kind of riff a lot and, and as long as we're keeping the shelves stocked with you know with product i can i get free reign on 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 r&d now at least for a while talked here. before so. for people that don't know the last episode we had with you and a lot of people probably didn't listen to that because you don't know how to hold a microphone unless there's a mic stand <laughs> and thankfully we have mic stands now but you were a fireman and after you left the department, you were kind of making uh, 
making fireman fuel on the side, <laughs> and then you what would you call it before? There's no, I don't know. We were probably by the time we got to that part of the conversation, we'd been drinking. So, well, you, it was a uh, fire water, maybe or, no, or something about um, it was like fuel. It was fuel, fuel for, for the something. soul. Yes, that's what. That's it was. right. Okay, yeah. If, um, if you're if you're working for the government, turn your radios off. But you know, I had a fuel ethanol producer's permit through the federal government, which is the other distilled alcohol permit that you can get besides a DSP and. Uh, you know that. Um, I guess my argument would have been probably a losing battle, but you know, I don't know that fuel was necessarily defined in the in the permit. No. So, like I said, I probably would have. I definitely would have lost that battle, but at least it covered me to uh, own an operator still. I would have come to your alcohol. aid. I would have yeah, come well, to your you. aid. Thank yeah. you, John. But yeah, so yeah, I was. I did. The, I was doing the fireman thing. I was there, and this was kind of a hobby of mine. The, the entire time I was there and I got the opportunity to come over here to Old Forge um, some cousins were opening a distillery um, just worked out great now Somehow, I didn't know they were cousins yes yes this is a family family uh, square for the most part everything you know we're not part of the old mill umbrella that brand but there is some common management for sure and the cousins that own this distillery also are partners with the old mill so we've got a really good relationship with them and we can which is why everybody gets together on heritage day right now this peach Uh, habanero heat it's (laughs) the the peach it's it's like a fake out it's like someone doing a deke or or something like you got got the shook yeah you just got shook and i I, it just broke my ankles because the peach (laughs) hits in the very beginning. Right. And all of a sudden, it's like, all right. The habanero. It's hot. Yeah. It's, but it's not It's not too hot where right. it, you, you feel like you need a glass of right. water after, but it really lingers. I mean, the finish on that for a rock and rye is crazy because that habanero just kind of stays it's in It's there, mouth. man, for sure. And, uh, yeah, it's good. Um, it's a little hotter than I like. I love spicy food, but... Um, real definitely proud of it the the days that we're producing that in here because again we use that gin basket this is that's a combination we do a vapor infusion on those habaneros but we also do a maceration and when i throw open the still when we're done and in the in the gin basket and that habanero vapor fills the store it's you know got a lot of coughing going on in here as you can imagine and then don't you dare eat hot wings with that Mm -mm. you know you better get something else because your your mouth is gonna be that might be a a challenge you should have like people at the old mill if you can eat some hot wings with the peach habanero rock and rye then you get like your picture on the wall you could do that or you know i'm thinking you know a, a, a menu item with these rock and rises as, as ingredients in a, a glaze or something, so a honey fennel barbecue sauce, maybe, oh. or a peach habanero hot sauce. If you're going to go for a a sesame ginger lemongrass wing or something, man, you've 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 inspired me, sir. You've inspired I me. I love to inspire you. <laughs> I am I am happy to inspire you. I think one thing that we're missing, if somebody can. Can get us, please and thank you. Is grapefruit time and the other rock and orange rye. rosemary. I like that idea of putting it in a glaze. Uh-huh. I think that would be really good. Uh-huh. And I almost wonder, like, maybe you could make the wing sauce with the peach habanero rock and rye. That's what I'm. Yeah. Oh, a dipping sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I honest to goodness, will pursue this next week. I'm going to talk to Danielle across the street, and we're going to. We're going to see if that's an option for them. Now, you were saying before, for the people that that did not listen to our episode when we were together at Little Arrow Resort in Townsend, Tennessee, for the whole day that we spent out there, you were a fireman, and then you came out here, and you became the distiller at Old Forge. Right. People wanted to make you go legit (laughs) instead of... Uh, right, make it fuel for the soul. Right, yes, and soul fuel. These are these are things we could talk about while we're sipping on these other the or, the orange rosemary rock and rye, and the uh, the grapefruit thyme. <laughs> I just want to call it. Yeah. Hey, it's grapefruit thyme. Grapefruit thyme. 
it but, needs um, a t-shirt for sure. There's you, no, you absolutely, absolutely need needs to do. a t-shirt. One of the things on an aside that I really like about Old Forge is they have a lot of t-shirts or you all have a lot of t-shirts here that aren't like cheesy distillery tees where it almost looks like it belongs in like a Patagonia catalog. Ah, yes. And it's like the bear on uh-huh. the back of the mountains. And then it says like Old Forge. I think um, I'd love to say that I have anything to do with the merchandising, anything above this, uh, beyond this fence, actually. I'm, I'm just not that good at it. The only I'm thing not you did was mer- the hammered. That's, that's the only shirt. And I didn't even come up with that. They just saw me acting a fool, and they said, we need a shirt that says, get hammered <laughs> at Old Forge Distillery. I, I, did, I, I designed a couple of T-shirts, and uh, you know, one was right around the time that uh, the Batman trilogy came out. Remember the Christopher Nolan one? Yes, I loved The Dark it. Knight. Yeah, and you know, it was the hero that Gotham deserved, whatever the, the tagline was. Yeah. That, you know. I had a T-shirt that had our logo shining up in the sky over the mountains, and it was, you know, the the hero that Pigeon Forge deserves, or something, you know, something like that. And it, my, my, no, it was too far off the bullet. Nobody got it. It was too much thinking, I suppose. If you did something about shine with that, so you're you're shining. Damn it. So that's where you got to yeah, go. Yeah, I guess so. That's, it needed to be anchored somewhere besides a movie. Yeah, like. You can use the movie, you can use the bat signal, right. but you could be shining a light on Pigeon Forge for something like that. That's right. Okay. Well, yeah. write that one down, too. It's okay. Yeah. I think you have a marketing person <laughs> close <laughs> by. We got one listening. Good. Now, you were saying, going back to, to that episode, though. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of stuff around here. So when we talk about all these different rock and rye flavors... There's a whole bunch of stuff in the area. There's a candy store across the street. Right. There's the restaurant at the old mill. Talk a little bit about where you get your inspiration because, yes, right, you guys do have Tennessee whiskey, and this is not just a moonshine distillery, and it's not just a rock and rye distillery. You, you all have whiskey, and you have rye, and you have gin, and you have all right. a bunch of other stuff. But where do you get the inspiration from? So, it, here? yeah, I think you just said it. You know, we have two different restaurants uh, the Pottery House Cafe and the Old Mill Restaurant that are both uh, influential. We have a candy, uh, the Old Mill Candy Kitchen, an Old Mill Creamery, the Farmhouse Kitchen across the street, too, for some savory inspiration. Uh, they have infused olive oils and a lot of jams, jellies, pickles, an entire wall of things over there that make a great Bloody Mary, the Farmhouse. But that, so. You know, the creamery for me, aside from Wayne helping out with some boozy ice cream recipes, he's our head, what would you call the head ice cream guy? The creamer. Creamer. The head creamer. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But he's. Get your head out of the gutter. Man, we started this. Anyway, so we we have a a line of uh, rum based cream liqueurs, and that was for me natural. It was, well, this can be, we can make this like a melted ice cream line. That's what we'll do. I'll go in over there and I'll pick out a few of his products that I find interesting and we'll turn them into a, a 34 proof melted ice cream. Candy Kitchen is no different. Um, you should call them Wu Tang. Wu Tang? Yeah. Like cream, cash rules everything around me. Cream, <laughs> right. get the money, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Well, again, uh, uh, that Mar- could be Wayne's marketing nickname. standing over here shaking her head like, no, we're not doing it. You can We're call not doing it. Wayne's new nickname could be Wu Tang. Wu Tang Wayne. Yeah. Wu Tang Wayne. He won't get it. <laughs> I'm not even sure I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I, yeah. I, I do have to mention, because I'm going to interject here with some actual notes about the booze. Right. This orange rosemary that's your favorite, it's got a little spice to it, which I like. It's, it's not spice like a spicy habanero, but right. it's the. That um, that rosemary. Oh, it pops. It's like an essential oil, it you know. Is. It's health. It's healthy. Where you put that essential oil kind of up to your your nose to open up your right. pores and all that stuff. So, what, do you, in your humble opinion, we went a little too heavy with the rosemary. No, I don't. I'm you not even it. saying that. Okay. I because it's oh, there it is. Sweet citrus notes with a sharp pine aroma. Right. Orange rosemary rock and rye is an 86 proof spirit to enjoy in a cocktail or over ice. Again, we are drinking these neat. Right. I Straight think if you bottle. were to have some ice in there, 
you would probably dilute it a little bit, and that's where we're not oh, testing yeah. it correctly. These are um, Jesse's. Like, why are you guys drinking straight out of the bottle here? But we, uh, yeah, we we are. It's okay. <laughs> After we've had our fill, we'll pass the bottle. It's um, come on, take it. Might as come well. Come on, these are all good as spritzers. Yeah. Right. Um, you can just a one to one, or you know, if you want a heavy drink, or if you uh, one to two on you know with some tonic over ice and uh, a little squeeze of fresh lemon, and you've got a really, really good, refreshing cocktail. It's not over rosemary. I wouldn't say the rosemary is too much. Um, it's just if you were expecting it to be super sweet with the orange. Mm-hmm. It has a little bit of a kick to it, right? It's right. got a little bit of that sure. pine, rosemary. Um, I would recommend that one to gin drinkers. Yeah, looking for something a little different. If you're a, if you're a gin fan, um, do that. You know, because the the rosemary and that green earthy. I confused it with spice. I think because I had just had. The, Your tongue was still the a flame one. from uh, from and the, the peach habanero. habanero. <laughs> but it's it's just got some depth, right? I think the the thing that's crazy to me about all of these rock and ryes is just how flavorful they are, mm-hmm. but they don't taste fake, right? So it's not well, like not. they're those are real herbs, man. Yeah, and I'm not sitting mm-hmm. there going like, oh my god. They right. just injected this with some stuff and mm-hmm. made it uh, made it taste this way. You're using the gin basket. You're you're infusing that flavor in there the right way. Absolutely. It, well, right or wrong, we're we're proud of it. You know, uh, well, most certainly, and um, it will get you in trouble, John, if you're not careful. Last but not least, it's grapefruit time. There you go. It's time. It's time. It's yeah. time. It's grapefruit time. Now, I'm going to let you try that. I'm going to let you assess it. Tell me what you think. And then I'm going to ask you, kind of like I prompted you with the honey and fennel, I'm going to tell you there's something else in there. And then tell me if you pick up on it. It's not advertised on the bottle. But something that this product was not the same until I added it as a, a little bit of a note. It just was not as round as it needed to be without this. And I don't, it might have been an accident. Why, the, to even stumble across this other flavor, but I definitely get the thyme, right? I definitely get the grapefruit, but I feel like there's another green in there. It's not the fruit that is in there. It's almost like maybe even a little bit of rosemary, or it's one of those other things that is a kitchen something I use to bake. Okay, perhaps. Am, am I off? There is something else in there, and there, and it, it is green when we process it, <laughs> when we smash it all up and add it. Um, elderflower, you get it? Yeah, yeah. I, it was, I was. It was. Uh, it was definitely something that was like, you know, I knew it wasn't a fruit, right. but it was something that was natural. That was like something I'd put on chicken or. It's it's really good, and it's we've been using it in our cocktail bar. Until, well, uh, currently as a kind of a, in, in cocktails as a kind of a St. Germain type addition, our version of a, you know, kind of an elderflower addition into cocktails. It's done, done really well. Now we are, speaking of elderflower, we're about to release our first new moonshine and gosh, it's probably been a year or two, man. I, I, my focus has been outside the moonshine line for so long. But we're going to release it. So is somebody else doing the moonshine and then you're kind of left to go do your own thing with the other stuff? No. We, we have another distiller, Isaac, who, who does an awesome job actually, you know, doing the distillation and stuff. But we're still, it, it really is in production. It's just, you know, him and me. Huh. So uh, I'm, you know, very much, you know, still boots on the ground as far as distilling. Not as much as I would like to like to be because that's the fun part of the job. But R and D um, compliance, um, so that's where I spend most of my time is is paperwork now. But um, so if I ha- if I have a weird idea, man, we'll we'll I'll send off to either Mother Murphy's and say, hey, can you give me a flavor that tastes like peanut butter mixed with 
or whatever combination I want to come up with, and they I don't know how their chemists do it, but they they can nail it, make it make life easier on me, for sure. What's the craziest thing you've ever come up with? Oh gosh, well our French toast moonshine. Um, you're probably going to notice when you taste it, it's just pretty maple forward now, and buttery. But there was a version of it in the uh, in in its inception that was. I started with a bacon wash, and it just tasted like a breakfast, you know, an entire breakfast. So we 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 nixed the bacon, and went with a little more uh, just the maple and uh, butter, a little bit of spice. But that was pretty weird at the time. Why um, didn't you keep that? I don't know. It, it just it was just too much to me. Really? But but you know, and then of course you know as soon as I made the decision and we went with what we had, you know, bacon turned into a thing you know bacon this bacon that everybody was so stoked about it <laughs> well i gotta tell you so last night the the guy from mccormick's grill mates mm-hmm. he is the chef chef kevin bolton and he made us a manhattan and he had infused bacon into the bourbon for like 14 days oh wow and then he made this manhattan and it was like the finish was all bacon, right? but it tasted like breakfast. And I, I have to think, if you had like a good French toast moonshine with a little mm. bit of bacon in there and, and you actually have that breakfast food, there's people that do like breakfast shots and things like that. I think that would be well, super good. Well, you know good. what we've, we've had some success with um, up in the cocktail bar. See, the cocktail bar can uh, a lot of the time serve as a, as a little bit of an R&D department with 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 some of the mixtures we can do but we've done a we've done an old fashioned with just a splash of of uh, french toast and a candied bacon that they do at the candy kitchen as a garnish and that's that's been popular I would love to try that yes we can we can make it happen so i have to say though i think i would go ginger lemongrass is my favorite Second is going to be orange rosemary. Third, oh, sorry, you know what? Grapefruit thyme and orange rosemary are probably tied for me. Really? Good. And then honey fennel and then peach habanero. And it's just because the peach habanero is so hot. (laughs) Just to me, I would much rather have that be, I almost need a side of blue cheese. Yeah, blue cheese dipping sauce for your peach habanero hot wing. Yeah. Be fantastic. If it was like that, I would 100% be in on this. We'll we'll put it on the we'll put it on the brunch menu. Now you a hunk of blue cheese. You mentioned this a little bit. You have a cocktail bar. There's people over there slinging drinks. They they look awesome over there. You got a great staff, but we're fortunate for sure. What cocktails are being served up? You mentioned some of the cocktails. I mean, you mentioned okay. the the breakfast stuff that's going on. Right. What's actually going on over at the cocktail bar? Well, uh, like I said, you know, we're about to switch to a fall feature menu that I could probably dig up for you. But <laughs> at current... Hold on, let's see. F- let's see. <laughs> He's digging at, through papers. Yeah, at current, our, uh, our feature menu has, you know, our version of an old-fashioned, which um, is pretty traditional, actually. A pigeon fizz. Oh, wait. Stop the clock. Yes. You're, you're talking about stuff that you have right now, but I, I'm stealing the show right now. Do it. Steal it. S'more shine. 1.5 ounces of chocolate moonshine. 1.5 ounces of vanilla bean moonshine. Top with hot chocolate. Build all ingredients in coffee mug rimmed with graham cracker crumbs. Garnished with toasted marshmallow. Hot damn. I, th- this starts October first. It'll be Tuesday. That menu will be uh, rolled out. What the hell? I know it. Why are you dangling that in front of a fat kid <laughs> and not letting me have some now? We, if you're, you're an really, ass. if you're really good to us, man, we could probably dig out a stale marshmallow from last year and <laughs> toast it for you. It's you st- stale ass graham crackers. That is just cold blooded. Yeah, I know it's dirty. It is very. It's dirty. dirty. 
No, we will. Uh, we'll certainly, certainly get you going on that. There's a pumpkin mule. Yeah, we've got a, a sangria. If you know, you're if one of those things, suckers, pumpkin right now. If you're if you're wearing Uggs, this menu is for you. Yeah, if you're one of those suckers that uh, goes for <laughs> pumpkin everything, if you go to the coffee shop and you're like, ah, do you have a pumpkin latte? Then that is. Right. That is for you. That's right. We we have we have you covered. I I love the ginger berry. Oh wait, there's more. Yeah, we have three on the back. There's more pumpkin. Oh, bourbon cider. Pumpkin. One ounce bourbon, one ounce ginger lemongrass rock and rye. Your favorite. Five ounces of sour mix. Oh no, goodness, a half ounce. Point five. Oh. Uh-huh. Decimals. Point five. Sorry. No, decimals matter. Reading is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then two ounces of apple cider. That right. looks great. It's the bomb, man. We can serve that one up hot, too. We, uh, uh, what comes along on o- October 1st also, we start sampling our mulled spice apple cider in here that's made with our farmhouse kitchen mulling spice, a little bit of pomegranate syrup, and some hot apple cider. And of course, you can juice that up with any alcohol that we have, too, but... That bourbon cider goes well with that mold spice one, too. See, the cocktail bar is where it's at. Oh, Rock and Rob over there, man. Is he that what you call done. him? What, Rob, his name is Rob Smith. He's got the best name in the world for puns. Any Anything that you, I mean, he's got the best name ever. He's probably, he is the reason that we're on TripAdvisor where we are, I guess. I sound he's, like. He's a, he's a salesman. It sounds like I'm back in Nashville. Right, yeah. <laughs> he probably belongs in Nashville. I don't want to tell him that, though. I don't want to lose him. He, he gets the woo girls going. That's so right. it's, it's good it times. Back. He's good. Rob's a good one. Yeah, but yeah. So, the hell were we? We were talking, about, cider, we were talking cider, about bourbon cider, bourbon but then cider. there's a pumpkin white Russian. So, if you are the dude. Yeah. And another Caucasian, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pumpkin Caucasian. That's just your opinion, man. <laughs> so if you are the dude and you want to abide at Old Forge Distillery, there's a two ounce coffee moonshine right. with a one ounce pumpkin cream. Robe and jelly sandals not included. <laughs> 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 you do have a nice rug right. in here, it, it though. It ties the room together, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It does. But these look... The red rosemary sangria. There's a blackberry moonshine, half ounce peach moonshine, one and a half ounces of white grape juice, and one, in, just and a splat, one ounce of yeah, tonic water. Yeah, just a splash water. of tonic, just to give it some bubbles. That one's popular, and we go dig fresh rosemary out of our herb garden. That's really the only thing that survives the winter. If we even have a winter anymore, I mean, hell, we may have went, uh, went, <laughs> mint all through the winter this year, to the way the weather is. But um, so rosemary goes in everything in the winter time. I have to tell you, the best thing is that, and we actually did it. Have you had screwball yet? No. I'm sure you all are working on a peanut butter whiskey now that everybody's coming up. Like but everybody's old... done it. Well, no, there's no. only three distilleries I... that do a peanut butter whiskey right now. Somebody contacted me a while back wanted me to do that. No. So Screwball did a peanut butter whiskey, and then Old Elk just came out with a peanut butter whiskey, and then your friends down the road, Old Smokey, right. just came out with a I peanut butter whiskey. I did see that. When Screwball first came out, one of the cool things is y'all had sent us last year a, a, a sampling of the different moonshines. Right. And... I hadn't got to it yet, and, and we even did the show together. And then after we did the show together, I went to Zeke, and I go, you know, it would be fun to take this sampling of Old Forge's moonshines and put them together with the peanut butter whiskey. Oh, yeah? And see what we could come up with. And if you take your chocolate moonshine oh, dang. and yeah. you mix it together with the peanut butter whiskey, and then even if you put a little bit of the vanilla moonshine in there too so you have the chocolate and the vanilla right. it's like Reese's peanut butter cups that sounds good you know when you, you were saying that my mind didn't go there though it probably should have it went to uh, you know a fruit oh like, like peanut, peanat butter, butter jelly, jelly? Pe- yeah well, we did that too and, yeah we did How that was it? too oh, so good <laughs> I bet <laughs> so good so it was one of the most fun shows Zeke and I ever had like a peanut butter and jelly old fashioned or something you know something that you could you know, sweeten up. That would be good. Because we reviewed everything on its own, right? right. But then we just spent the last half of the episode just messing mixing it around. Mixing peanut butter mix, whiskey. Mixing everything together and saying, oh, man, this tastes really good. You know what? At the risk of wanting to release it someday and showing my hand too soon, 
you know, we had in R and D, you know, all of our cream liqueurs. You know, we we have probably fifteen. I'm staring total. at one right now. Um, we have, I think, they rotate seasonally. But one of the ones that was did really really well back here, sampling and tasting that we never released was a, a peanut butter cream. Oh, that was really really good. So that might be an option, something to think about revisiting, especially considering people have done the peanut butter whiskey. I could do that. I could do a peanut butter moonshine, or you know, what about a peanut butter cream? Well, I think of a peanut butter cream, and if you're thinking about like a boozy ice cream, Dude. and you're going to have something that you're going to pour over that, yeah, that would be really good. You know, these our cream liqueurs, we've had success. You know, you just cut them, you know, one part cream liqueur and two parts, you know, cream or milk, and put them in your homemade ice cream machine. You can have a, a boozy ice cream. It runs about 5.7% alcohol, so it's like a beer. Shit. Yeah. I mean, it... <laughs> it's ice cream, so you'll 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 probably get you'll probably get fat before you get drunk, but you it know, would still taste it's, good. It's the it bomb. Just, it we've, just has the man, right hint, like the yeah, right amount. We've got some up here right now that's made with our orange and cream. Before oh. you hit the road today or tomorrow, whenever it is, go up there and we'll get you a cup of it, man. It's awesome. Well, I'll be here. It's easy. You know, I was supposed so to be here till five or six, and I think you're gonna make me get out of here. It's not even three. Yeah. <laughs> and we're probably going to be out of we'll here We'll be in soon. the cocktail bar soon. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be in the cocktail bar soon. But, yeah, so we, we've done rum raisin over there. Oh, it's Boozy four. Sorry. It's already my, four. My, oh, gosh. My watch is on Central Time. <laughs> <laughs> but eh, we did. We have a watermelon taffy cream, which everybody's like, what in the hell is that? But I like watermelon taffy that they have at the candy kitchen. I love watermelon That's taffy. That's like my favorite. Great, for whatever reason, it was good, too, when I was a kid. But watermelon taffy, I was like, that would be a good cream liqueur. You know? So, anyway, I made one, and that was the first ice cream we did. Oh, we I love... We froze that one up to in, an, in an effort, you know, here towards the what we thought was going to be the end of the summer. And that was a summer seasonal. We still had quite a bit of it left, so I was like, we'll make some ice cream. That'll help sell it. And sure enough, man, it was good. And, and the thing is, like, summer is not over yet. No, it's not. It's nine... 95 outside right now. And it's now. October, and yeah. I'm in long pants because fire ants pick I know. My legs. That, is, that is inconvenient, brother. That certainly is an opportunity to overcome. So, another thing I want to talk about, and it doesn't get talked about enough, is that you all do have a whiskey. And although this whiskey is sourced, it doesn't necessarily taste like the place it is sourced that's from. That's right. Um, and and that's enough of a hint, I think, for people. If right. we are in Tennessee and you know you have a 10-year-old whiskey, you have a very good idea as to where this is sourced right. it's, from. It's a Tennessee distillery that is not in Lynchburg. Yes. <laughs> and, it, and it also does not make rum. That's so right. Oh. If you, yes. If you put those two together... And that subtract leaves, them from the three. That's one other place that's a lot where of math. it could be. That's a lot of math, man. I now, wasn't planning on doing that today. Now, this is a 10-year-old Tennessee bourbon whiskey. That's right. What that means, and the reason I want to say this is there, there was somebody who actually asked me this question. A Tennessee bourbon does not go through the Lincoln County process. A Tennessee whiskey does. Right. Now, this is 10 years. It is 89 proof. What made you go 89 proof opposed to a different proof? Golly. I don't know, to be honest with you. We liked it better at 89. I Personally, I think we discussed going higher um, for this since it is a single barrel release. You know, I think people expect, and it's non-chill filtered. We left all the goodies in there. Um, we wanted to go a little higher in an effort to, to keep flocculation or any hazing down, but I just don't like to drink anything higher than around 80 or 90 proof. So we, we went to 89. I think probably Chris Tatum had some input on that. Maybe he graduated uh, middle school in 89 or something or high school or college or, you know, I, I feel like it, it's something. He is old, so I want yeah. to say college. I, I hope that that doesn't, you know, ruin some of the charm about this product and the mystique behind that mysterious 89 proof, but it... It probably wasn't as good a story as, as, as it could have been why well, we chose that. You would think maybe you can have your hand in a special bottling that would be a higher right, proof. You seem brother. like a higher proof man. I'm, I'm definitely not. I mean, I may come across that way, 
I'm definitely high octane with, with, with regard to energy and stuff like that most of the time. But when it comes to drinking, I'm, I'm a, a fairly low proof guy. Not sweet. I don't like anything sweet. I'm fortunate that I don't have a sweet tooth, but I, I like my alcohol around 80 or 90 proof. Well, because I guess you don't want to flame out too soon. I guess if you were to have... <laughs> well, I am a sprinter too, so... If you were I'm to have higher proof stuff... I'm a walking contradiction. I'm a paradox. I'm the same way. I'm a skinny fat guy. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, I don't eat a whole heck of a lot. I don't eat terrible stuff, but maybe you don't want to be able to have... Or maybe you want to be able to have more than two drinks. If you right. had a, If you had a higher proof offering and all of a sudden you're you have two drinks you're like yeah this is 120 proof i should it's, slow it's down a quicker to the blood proof, that way yeah well you, you get can to just spend. taste the product i mean yeah. let's be honest you know a lower proof is you know you, you get to experience a little bit more of the product than just the alcohol that's what it boils down to for me that's what it can what it boils down to <laughs> but, boiling alcohol yeah. so speaking of this tenure you know this is actually in fairly short supply because everything is rolling over or has rolled over to a 12 year and Wait, we're about to you have 12 year old we we do not currently we are going to when? we are going to be releasing uh, sooner than later hmm. um, we've we, we have all of our approvals we have uh, raw material we have obviously the 12 year old bourbon in in stock um, but we're working with our potter over here I don't think I've mentioned the pot the pottery over here at all. And no. the entire time you've been sitting here, we've talked about food I know and I candy. park behind there. Right. Well, but Tommy next door, our head potter, is that right? Yeah. Head potter, head creamer, head yeah. potter, head candier. Anyway, And that's Tommy. why, you know, there there's people's last names. So you know how somebody's right. last name might be creamer or potter? Right. That's where it really came from, is that, right. like, Smith. So Ra- Rob, Rob Smith. He's, for, he's of the blacksmith people, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what Shantons have yeah, done. We've done. We drink. <laughs> the Shantons have done nothing. Uh, but I mean, can you just watch? Ra? I can't imagine him swinging a, a hammer or an axe or anything. No. Anyway, uh, speaking of digression. Anyway, back to the twelve year. So Tommy is is fashioning a limited edition. Each barrel is going to have their own limited edition piece of pottery included in the in the gift pack. So we're we're getting that. Um, getting that finalized, and uh, as soon as we can get a couple of other loose ends tied up, there we'll uh, we'll be releasing this. So all that to say that this twelve or this ten year is uh, soon to be twelve, and it's you're gonna have to pay more for it. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it now? And and I guess that's a good question. How much are all the rock and rye? Okay. And how uh, much is the the bourbon? Rock and rye is thirty one ninety nine a bottle. That's They're all a fifths. Very fair price. Right. And the bourbon is fifty nine ninety nine. Even when it goes to twelve year, I can't see it going up that high. It won't be. It won't be terribly terribly expensive. The the the, the thing that's going to increase the price on that twelve year is everything that it comes with. You know, the the, the value added. The that little chalice that Tommy's making. Um, out of pottery, the, the gift box, the, a lot of the story. I'm not going to tell you the name of the of the line yet, but it's it's deeply rooted in the history of the of the old mill square and and the pottery. Um, so you'll have to wait for that. But we've got a good little story that that involved. You know this this is this is badass. We're excited yeah. about it. We've been excited about it for probably two years. It's just now we've, we're finding time to get it done and get I, it done right. I want to see what the pottery is that that comes with it. Ah, our box guy has it. The yeah. guy making our box has that piece, but I can show you something similar. I would be very interested, in, yeah. and you're going to probably have to hold a bottle for me because I can't wait to have some. You got it. You got it, man. What sure. else is coming down the line? I mean, we've been talking for a long time. What else is coming down the line? And we hadn't said shit. We haven't, but I <laughs> think it's We've been talking been for two hours. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, we got grains and grits coming up. Yes, that's a that's not that's not an exclusive an old forge exclusive thing. Are but we are part of the trail. Are you going to stay because I am going to be staying at Little Arrow Resort? I'll Will be you there. be staying there at, as long as they'll let me. I feel like you know my family is going to be there too, but I feel like I need to crash on somebody else's couch. You need yeah you you can you can you can stay with me, John. Do you want to be Big Spoon or Little Spoon? <laughs> because I feel like our family doesn't want be, to see us. You'll be during that. Fortunately, festival. For, yeah, fortunate. Yeah, my, um, 
My wife is pretty scarce on the Friday night. I think yeah. that's the night that you know your 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 VIP event where we can kind of let our hair down a little bit as industry members and and have a little fun. So she well, knows. Well, that's the one where we we're right. going to go back and make s'mores in front right. of the fire at Little right. Arrow. And uh, what was that? The s'more shines. Yeah. Perhaps we could roll that out. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, fortunately for these tiny homes over there, there's there's an extra bed. You may have to crawl up into a loft somehow or sleep I on the, the front porch. I had to do that with the last event we did out there. I had to, I had to crawl up on the loft, and I slept two nights up on the loft, and I didn't sleep. Right. Like, it's a little pad that they put up there, and, and right. You know, the accommodations at Little Arrow Resort are amazing. Off the chain, man, they're they are amazing. You're right. But when you're six three and three hundred pounds, and you're a tiny up home under, might not be. No, the tiny home was great. If I could have had the bed, the tiny loft, however. My daughter is only three, <laughs> and we didn't trust her on the steep stairs. Right. So she slept downstairs in the bed, and I slept upstairs right. in the loft, and. It, yeah, it wasn't that conducive. Well, it's yes, you can come stay on my couch. Yeah. Anybody out there listening or that's going to be listening and want to know when this Big Spoon, Little Spoon fiasco is going to take place, it's going to be uh, November 2nd. It's Grains and Grits. It's and in you Townsend, can buy Tennessee. tickets. You can. Right now, if you buy them now before the event, you'll pay 65 Day of, at the door, you're looking at 75 So it definitely, definitely benefits you to, especially if you have a group, you know, you, $10 times... Eight is that's a lot of money. So and how many people it. are going to be there? How many different distilleries? Everybody on the Tennessee Whiskey Trail, which I, the number escapes me. It's always growing. The trail's growing. The the guild is growing. It's awesome. But yeah, you're you're looking at thirty plus for sure. And and what's exciting about it is you know you've got all this local food that's represented local. You know all your Tennessee distilleries, and for the most part, you have all of the the head and or master distillers present so you get to you get a meet and greet with people like jeffrey arnett jeff arnett i suppose but you know master distiller for jack daniels his name is jeffrey though even if he goes by jeff yeah yeah jeffrey but anyway so you uh, that's you know i get i still get fan hands when i see him i'm like is keener short for something keener yeah uh no not that i know of I was just figuring. Right. It's but yeah, a so yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be there. What's left of me after Friday night will be there Saturday. Um, Jason from Old Tennessee will probably be there. We'll definitely be there. Hopefully they'll drag Dwight, but I'm you'll sure get an you'll opportunity get, uh, to meet everybody. Charlie makes, and Andy from Bellme. Absolutely. And you'll Nelson's. get Tyler from uh, from Corsair out there. Tyler from Corsair. I like He's Colton. Always fun. If you can get Colton, Colton there. Colton will probably be there. You'll see Stanton Webster. From postmodern, he's I a saw trip, Stanton man. Last night, he's so funny. Stanton, that made laugh. This. He, <laughs> that's not even. That's a terrible impression. No, it's deeper because he has a better yeah. radio ah. voice. He does. I um, I saw him last night at Bacon and Barrel, and I have to mention he made this gin old fashioned that was incredible. Yes. So you know you'll probably get Lee from Leaper's Fork. You'll get Heath from H. Clark. You'll get the folks over at 10 South. You'll get Knox Whiskey Works, all of the different places on the trail that we haven't mentioned. Go ahead and check it out. If you don't already have it, download the Tennessee Whiskey Trail app on your phone. That'll let you know all of the different places that you can go to to visit the Tennessee Whiskey Trail. Another event, and Keener, I really hope you're going to this, and we can say that we are now a part of this event. It's already been announced by the time this podcast comes out. The Nashville Whiskey Weekend in December in Nashville, Tennessee at the Omni Hotel. We will be partnering with the Guild and the L5 Foundation to do a bunch of awesome stuff to raise money for L5, which raises money for people with cancer, it's not necessarily going to be all of the different things that you would have like insurance pay for, but paying for gas cards and food cards and all the other stuff that you know piles up when you're sick. There, there's going to be two events. There's going to be a VIP event on Friday night, which is going to be a dinner at the George Jones. There is going to be a concert from John Rich and the from Big and Rich. 
And then Saturday, it's going to be like your more traditional whiskey tasting event Mm -hmm. where everybody's going to get around. You're going to have tables. And it is going to be only Tennessee distilleries there. It's exciting. Do you know about that yet? Oh, yeah. I know. Are you going? You know it. All right. I'll be there. You can crash on my bed that time right thank you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all for reciprocation right man yeah the omni is a pretty sweet place to stay well i can't wait for all of this stuff going on anything else you want to say about all the good things happening in old forge yes we... but i can't think of them all right now i think we got the high points you know what i think heritage day is a is a very big thing we wanted to talk about we got that done grains and grits for sure uh it's muscadine season, so get, we did get your that. gin. Get, come get your gin, and I'll definitely send you away with some of that. Some driving gin. <laughs> <laughs> some driving gin if I'm some in the park, back seat. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's else right. Is that's right. Some some riding gin. I can't riding wait gin. to spend some more time out at Heritage Days and go on a pony ride and all that other fun God, stuff. I hope you go, go on a pony ride. <laughs> I'm going to watch. I want to thank Keener. I want to thank Jimmy. I know Jesse. I want to thank Jesse. <laughs> I want to thank Tatum. I want to thank all the people involved at the old mill and the old forge. Whatever uh, dude made that turkey leg. Whatever dude made that turkey yeah, the leg. turkey leg guy. But I could have thank had you. like four ears of that corn. <laughs> that, I think, it, it had a little bit of cheese. It was like Mexican street corn without the the spice. Okay, so no chili powder or whatever goes yeah. on there. Okay. It was really what good. they put on that feta? Yeah, what goes on like Mexican that. street corn? Velveeta? Cojita. Velveeta might be a good thank one, Thank you, Jesse. Yeah. And I want to thank Jesse. She's been running and getting us drinks and all <laughs> sorts of stuff and taking our picture while we've been here. So right. thank you for that. Keener, I just want to say I'm happy to call you a friend. Yes, John. Thank you for filling in and sitting in Zeke's chair. Man, I hope I did all right. I certainly have had a good time, man. Thanks for coming down and hanging with us, man. Hey, you've done awesome. Yeah. And folks who find Old Forge Distillery at Old Forge Distillery on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. All of your social media, right? Find them also in the city center of Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, right next to the old mill. That is where, as we learned from Jimmy, that was the heartbeat of Pigeon Forge, where Pigeon Forge started. You can find the dads at Dads Drinking Bourbon on Instagram, Bourbon Dads on Twitter, Dads Drinking Bourbon on Facebook. Find us on your favorite podcast app. Whatever it is, we are on it. Please leave us an open and honest review, just like we leave open and honest reviews about the whiskey we drink. And you can also find us in Nashville, Tennessee. Keener, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Cheers. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>